witches and wizards, and welcome back to Obscura Lupa Presents. Let me take you into a world of magic and wonder as we take a look at the mystical adventures of Billy Owens. Our tale takes us on an incredible journey to the fantastical kingdom of Canada, where our hero, Billy Owens, is celebrating his 11th birthday and discovers something shocking. He's a child actor, but also a wizard, I guess. I don't know, he finds a wand. Also, Rowdy Roddy Piper is in this. Points for originality, I guess. Magic is in the air. This may seem familiar to you, most likely because Billy Owens was ripped off by some unpopular hack named J.K. Rowling. It's best not to dwell on someone who uses other people's works to get themselves ahead. Now let's rip on this terrible kids movie because I can't make my own. We begin on Spirit River, which will become important to the plot of the movie. Roddy Piper is taking a late night boat ride with his pal Victor when he thinks the weather is getting a bit too hazardous. Wow, what a clear and stormy night. We must turn back. We can't. You saw it on the map. Our destiny is etched in this map. My map. And I won't turn back. You must turn back. I won't turn back. You must turn back. I won't turn back. You must turn back. I won't turn back. You must- Thanks, exposition dump. Did you get that, audience? Who made the map? Fuck it, I'm no wizard, I don't know these things. People find destiny etched maps all the time. Figure the creature! The creature! The beasts. Victor! No! He threw himself into the river after seeing what movie he was in? I don't know, the editing's a bit hazy there. Welcome to the mystical adventures of Billy Owens, kids, where murder and confusion awaits you. The movie is narrated by Billy's friend Hermione. I mean Mandy. They also have a friend named Ron. I mean Devin. Why is the story narrated by Mandy when the main character is Billy? The nearest I can guess is that she had the better speaking voice, or possibly because they just needed to pad the runtime out and she was the only one available. Wait, is that the camera crew behind him there? Usually us kids are pretty happy on our birthdays, but today Billy just didn't feel like himself. Billy was born on November 11th, so maybe turning 11 on the 11th day of the 11th month was just too many 11s for anyone to handle. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, back it up, movie. First of all, show, don't tell. Second of all, how did Mandy know how Billy was feeling? And third of all, too many 11s for anyone to handle? Eh? Excuse me, how much does this toy cost? That'll be eleven dollars and eleven cents. Oh no, that's too many elevens! I thought I'd feel different. Well, you will, once we officially celebrate. Let me guess, birthday pizza? What kid complains about getting pizza? That's an awesome thing to get for your birthday. Oh, let me guess, you got me presents and a new bike too, huh? I tell you, Mom, you're the worst. Sometimes it's just hard being a kid. Stupid birthdays and pizzas and presents. Why don't you just kill me, Mom? So, um... Has anything actually happened to him yet? Hey! Hi. Did you know that by the time you're 11, your motor skills are at their peak of development? No. No, no, no. 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 It's like the only thing they knew about Hermione is that she was smart. So this girl just spouts off random facts with barely any rhyme or reason. Just because someone has a brain doesn't mean they lack human social skills. It's not like Hermione just spouted off random Wikipedia entries as she walked down the hallway. The truth be told, for Billy on his 11th birthday, his motor skills weren't the only thing at his peak of development. Also his penis? I'm not sure I'm ready for the puberty talk movie. I really think this is something I should discuss with my parents. Hey, he wasn't really eaten by that dragon. Spoilers movie! Thank God he's alive. I was really worried there. And that is why most all of us can trace our family lines to another family in Spirit River. Because everyone is incredibly incestuous? It is a well-known fact that the matriarchal lineage was very important to the Viking society. Fruit-flavored jello was invented in 1897. 
Did you know that baby snakes are often more dangerous than their parents? Deja vu is the illusion of having already experienced Shut something actually being experienced for the first time. River Scouts first appeared on Shut the night of April 18, 1775 to help light the way for Paul Revere. Did you Shut know up. that Shut our just, library I, is one of the first scriptorial why are you libraries alive? in the new world? Aw, oh, the geek got a card from his mommy. Happy birthday to my little baby steak bomb. Here's some money to buy yourself some diapers. Well, I was held back for two years. My character options are pretty much limited to being a bully or doing the truffle shuffle. November 11th, what a fantastic day to turn 11, Mr. Owens. Someone turning 11. Did you know that the chances of being born at the stroke of 11 on the 11th of November are 137 million to one? Oh no, too many 11s, I can't handle that. That Potter was a tool. He wasn't special enough to have that many 11s on his birthday. Or maybe this is like the number 23, and Billy is seeing 11s everywhere as he slowly descends into madness. You never know with this movie. Hey, look. Okay, so I complained about Mandy being limited to basically one character trait, but that's nothing compared to Devin here. I didn't think it was even possible for a character's personality to be boiled down to sneeze, but there you go. Anyway, Billy ends up accidentally smashing Devin's school project into Bully Kid's face. Oh, frick! Hang on, was he just gonna say, oh fuck? Not fucking appropriate, Billy Owens. Bully Kid ends up chasing him all the way across town, apparently, where Billy happens upon a place of magic and fantasy. Ye old pawn shop. Camera guy in the reflection again. It must be a magical camera! The pawn shop is owned by William Thurgood, Roddy Piper's character. It's a little weird how he plays the role. It's like he's playing the character older than he is, but they didn't put any effort into making him look older. Um, Dumbledore's old, right? But Hagrid isn't, and we don't have any other friends to cast in the movie. Oh well, guess we'll be both, Roddy. I trust that you're finding everything you need. Also, sometimes he has an old man voice, and sometimes he doesn't. Whenever he remembers to do it, I guess. Billy finds a wand there and asks how much it is. We have a 30% discount today, and I took my 15 there, and my 30% birthday discount, and I uh, bring that on the one there, that'd be $11. Oh no, 11! That's how many days he has to live! And how many days before Thurgood goes to jail? Approximately 2% of the population is allergic to cats. <clears throat> He's even allergic to cooked potatoes. Cooked potatoes? <laughs> 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 Allergies are funny. You should feel self-conscious and awful about things you can't control. Look at his expression after she starts her random facts bullshit. It's like he wants to strangle her. That was pretty much me through this whole movie. It's a magic wand! Get out of here! For your information, all modern sciences trace their origins from practices and beliefs that were originally magical. So, you get out of here. No, 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 you get out of here. Guys, guys, it, I don't care what it is. I just like the look of it, and I want it for my birthday, so I bought it. Um... Is it awful of me to make fun of child actors? That's probably bad, right? Okay, look, they're young, but I think the previous review established that there are child actors who are fantastic, so I have no problem saying that the acting is lacking a bit here with our lead. He sticks out pretty bad compared to the others as well, since most of them are decent. He's giving me pocket ninja vibes here. Time waits for no man, or birthdays. You got chocolate cake and icing waiting for you, my goodness, ice cream! And he was sent to the asylum shortly after, raving about mutant frogs and saving the human race with his wang. My goodness, ice cream! It, it's weird, but I think we'll be back. And soon. Billy and Devin showed up when I was practicing my Tai Chi. Boom! Pocket Ninjas called it! This must be the unofficial sequel. Somehow we knew that we had been drawn to this unusual place, and we were going to go back. Soon. Yeah, Billy just said that. Like, 20 seconds ago. Oh man, what if it was magic? Take that, Nimi Squeeze! Wow, what a magical experience. I tell you, what a great origin story here. The tennis ball levitation trick. It's a classic. So I guess he's cool with being magical now. Wasted no time on that. I guess it wasn't that important to the story. Get this mess cleaned up. It's almost 11. 
What's really going on in here? you never believe it. <laughs> well, you know, I experimented too when I was in college. You kids have fun. They waited until 11 o'clock to bring out the birthday cake. It's almost the next day. A little late to get started, don't you think? They're really dedicated to this 11 motif. Hey, honey, want to mess with the kid and theme everything in his life around the number 11? That sounds hilarious. Let's do it. Happy birthday to you. Sure enough, the next morning we decided to get together and go back down to the pawn shop to find out more about the wand's powers and why it only worked for Billy. Uh, uh, uh. Well, clearly because he's the brightest of his generation. But first, he uses his powers to get out of his chores. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens. Wow, without magic, he couldn't have whispered in his own voice or not hidden very well. Take that, Potter! Abracadabra! Alakazam! Please! The magic word really is please? I know, it's really that lame. And then the kids were arrested for breaking and entering. Billy's wand leads them to a glowing chest, which sounds much more inappropriate than it is. Ah, it's Roddy Piper's severed head! Anyway, Thurgood starts rambling about something or other. What? What is it? The map! 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 Did... Did he just ask what a map was? I just... Can't even after that. We were in awe as Thurgood told us about his quest and how Billy and his ancestors were connected to Spirit River, all within such an incredible legacy of magic and danger. Whoa, freaky. Well put, young man. I can't even protect myself from Kurt and Amy's. How am I supposed to find a treasure with half a map and a bicycle? When did Thurgood mention anything about a treasure? There's only half a map? And what is Thurgood's journey? How was he involved with Billy's ancestors? That narration didn't talk about any of this. I think you're missing some key plot points, movie. Thus begins Billy's training in the dark arts. I mean, white magic. This is accomplished through green screening and what must have been an awesome day on set. I tell ya, this is completely lame, but hell if Roddy Piper doesn't sell me on the magic here. He's there to kick ass and teach spells, and he's all out of ass. Hang on, now the other kids can use the wand? They just said it only worked for Billy. Did they have magical ancestors too, or does this tie into the town's incestuous history? Billy and his friends decide to use the heritage room at the library to do some more research. But for whatever reason, the library doesn't let anyone under 18 use it, so the three of them decide to wait it out until closing. Or they could, you know, ask one of their parents to help. Quick, grab the Cloak of Invisibility, kids! Oh, sorry, I mean the Eleven of Invisibility. Anyway, while they're waiting, they find an old news report on Victor's drowning. I'm printing this. Wow, it's instantly there! Wait, this was in the news and no one realized that teacher at the school was that supposed dead guy? He used his real name! No one was like, hey dude, didn't you drown yesterday? And if Thurgood was there and the drowning was unexplained, then wouldn't he be a murder suspect? I'd be asking some serious questions, kids. We didn't actually see that dragon drown Victor on screen. Projecto after effectso! Ah, oh, flashlights! Ah, something convenient that had no reason to be there. Anyway, here's what the shit is up with Spirit River. The Viking god Loki put a dragon in there to protect his treasure and his magical scepter. And there's a secret passage leading to these things. Yes, these wizards are powered by Viking magic. I guess. I could make an Avengers joke now, but I won't because that's stupid. I'm just trying to figure out what the mission is here. I guess Billy has to find the magical scepter before Victor does, but why was Thurgood after it in the beginning? I'm calling it now. This was a deal gone bad between two lowlife wizard scum. Thurgood was totally trying to steal everything with Victor until he chickened out in the storm. And I still don't know who made that map for them and what that destiny etching business has to do with anything. Apparently all of this information is in the demonic hell section of the library. Hieroglyphics! Now I don't get it. 
Kid, you asked what a map was earlier. I'm surprised you know how to dress yourself in the morning. Anyway, these hieroglyphics are apparently a hologram of what Thurgood is doing right now. I have no fucking idea at this point. You left me to die. No! Greed! Greed over honor left you to die, Victor. No, I'm pretty sure it was you, Thurgood. You were out on the lake, too. Don't even try to get preachy on us. We shared years of friendship, William. Now, we will share an eternity of darkness! Wow, you, uh, knocked off his hat. That sure is dark, Victor. You will not succeed, Victor. Your soul was lost in the river! I need to share this clip with the world now. Hey, neighbors! Your soul was lost in the river! Hey, checkers! Your soul was lost in the river! Your soul was lost in the river! Victor is trying to be all menacing here, but I just can't take him seriously over the combination of loud sound effects, newspapers sticking to the green screen, and Roddy Piper not bothering to move the one that hits him off of his face. I guess his speech was lost in the river! So the kids needed to break into the heritage room to see Victor talking to Thurgood via book hieroglyphics? I thought I smelled a rat. Ah, I guess if Bully Kid can't even bully properly, he might as well become Victor's bride. It's the only logical step. Never mind why this powerful wizard needs a small child to do his bidding, or why he even came to this conclusion. Does the term master number mean anything to you? A master number is a super number that predicts a change coming. Super number? Is that a technical term? Please! <sighs> you keep your hands to yourself, Mr. Squeamies. How completely underwhelming. And is please seriously the magic word for everything? Wow, Viking magic sure is stupid. So the master number bit is all just a lead up as to why the number 11 is so awesome or whatever. If one is the loneliest number, 11 is the one that just keeps overstaying its welcome and macking on you at the bar. In fact, it has more potential than any other number. That's great, Professor. Maybe you can give me an example on Monday? An example of what? What the number 11 is? Holy shit, kid. Anyway, this is broken up by a wacky security guard. I guess Victor and his bride will have to make out somewhere else. Well, I was thinking we could all stick together and make it to the pawn shop. Yeah, like, sure, that's... All we have to do is outrun him. But what if he follows us with his cronies? I don't know. That's, that's when we have to run as fast as we can, I guess. Yeah. I just... I'm a horrible person. I can't let this go. It's so obvious when the kid is reaching for his lines, and that's bad when this is your lead character. They couldn't switch the roles or do a second take or anything? Why didn't they just make the girl the main character? She's doing all the narration anyway. I don't even know why this scene was included. It didn't contribute anything to the movie. Mrs. Cops, how long have the vines been at the school? Just today, actually. Well, do you know what's causing them? Ah, got stuck with the vine report, huh? Must have been a slow day in the newsroom. Not sure what kind of answer she was expecting as far as what the cause of vines are. Stay down, geek! It's about to get tragic! Oh man, you heard him. It's about to get tragic. This is a thrill ride, let me tell you. Hogwarts has nothing on generic Canada Elementary. Wait, holy shit, did Billy just do a flip over a book card? You'll never make it work! You're too weak! He's just throwing out random insults with no meaning at this point. You'll never make the team, Billy! You were adopted! And again, why is the bully kid in on the magic stuff now? How does Victor benefit in any way from this partnership? Victor corners Billy in an empty classroom so he can glow red at him. Where is this? Uh, in your hand, Professor? Why are you killing Spirit River? And how do you kill a river? This makes no sense! It turns out the principal is in on the magic thing, and I guess likes employing lying, thieving, supposedly dead people at her school. You might be wise to stay out of this. Rubbish. You have no real power here. Oh, rubbish. We can pretend we're English if we want to. Pip-pip, balderdash, and gobshite, what have you. Destiny works both ways, Victor. Destiny works both ways? I just... 
This dialogue hurts me. She sends Victor off and tells Billy to look into his heart for answers. Instead of, you know, saving him some trouble and just telling him. Meanwhile, the town is hot on the case of the growing vines. Why do they have a few dudes in hazmat suits out there? If they thought the vines were toxic, why were they letting all the kids go to classes anyway? These seem like grossly irresponsible authority figures. And that's like three vines out there, guys. Maybe don't panic yet. So it turns out it's the Hunter's Moon, which means the path of the Old Spirit River will match the path of the New Spirit River and allow evil to cross over. And if a second Hunter's Moon happens in the same century, then the Old Spirit River will kill the new one, and a dragon will be set free that must be defeated before it reaches the surface. Then what the hell was that thing that drowned Victor in the beginning? Are you following any of this? I thought the plot was about some scepter or something. Half of this shit doesn't make any sense. They're talking about rivers dying like this is a thing. This is not a thing. Billy rescues Thurgood from a fire in his pawn shop, and we're provided with the only emotionally investing bit of the movie. Unfortunately, they dubbed over all of it with narration from his explainy pants, so thanks for that movie. And Billy's parents are magical too. Oh come on, is the whole town in on this? Not that it matters. Apparently anyone can use a wand with some lessons. The river project has failed. This town will die. Unless someone like you can do something to stop it. Dude, he's like 11. Do it yourself. So far, we've met at least four adults with established magical powers that can't be asked to do anything to save the day here. At least in Harry Potter, there was a reason why Harry was the chosen one, other than the fact he was 11. Did you know that octopi change their color when they're frightened? Did you know that friendship is the strongest bond between two friends? Make that three people. I think you mean four people. Believe in your friends, Billy. And yourself. Damn it, Billy. You put your hand out here, or so help me, I will beat you to next Tuesday. Only you control the key. Me? I don't even have a clue what's going on. Yep, that's this movie in a nutshell. I wouldn't trust this kid with anything more complex than a tissue. Anyway, finding the passageway involves the power of friendship, chasing down a little person in a Halloween mask, and teleporting through a stump, which leads them back to Thurgood so they can borrow his boat. So, to sum things up, they just wasted a bunch of time farting around in the woods to come to the conclusion that the river passage is located in the river. Good, so I feel dumber for having watched this now. So the super secret entrance is a cave. Glad they needed a magical tree stump to find that. Well, at least it'll take a little bit to find the magical scepter, and oh, it just took them one minute. What's it doing to me? Did and Billy just drops it because he doesn't make the connection that this was maybe the magical scepter they needed to save the day. How is this kid the chosen one? No, really, I'm legitimately asking here. And none of the adults are gonna go with them, at least for moral support? Man, these people suck. They end up fighting an undead viking, which sounds a lot cooler than it really is. Billy! He's okay! Yeah, he seems fine. Flailing on the ground is a good sign, right? Return to where you came from! That was incredibly easy. You know, this could have been avoided if Billy wasn't a complete idiot, but I guess they weren't really in any danger in the first place. So now it's time. Time for what? To be heroes. Oh come on, how did he follow them in? He didn't use a magic tree stump or anything. I'm beginning to think this secret passageway stuff is bullshit. Didn't Thurgood teach you anything other than how to hide behind a rock? He taught us far more than you did! How dare you insult my history teaching skills! Now this is just sad. They're trying, but I can't take Fu Manchu Dragon seriously here. Can't yeah, hold him back! Billy, hold on! Class dismissed. Wait, wait, seriously? That's it? What the hell just happened? They just ran away from Victor and threw some light at the dragon and... What, that killed it? Did they abandon Victor to die? You need to explain these things. And that's it. They get a map in the mail that I guess leads to the treasure or sequel bait or... I don't fucking know. Who the hell sent them the map? Why didn't the other map lead to the treasure? What happened to Victor? What did the vines have to do with anything? Why the hell are Billy's parents so irresponsible? This makes no sense! Uh... 
just awful. The plot was lost in the river! Let me try to be nice here. For a Harry Potter knockoff, they did actually put some effort in. The effects weren't too tragic considering what it was, and they did do some of the lighting and sets decently. Roddy Piper was a lot of fun, as usual. He continues to put his whole heart into whatever role he plays. Unfortunately, the movie suffers from some terrible acting on other fronts, nonsensical dialogue, and a difficult-to-follow plot. It's an amusing rip-off, though, and probably worth watching if you enjoy Roddy Piper. And guess what, boys and girls? This movie has a sequel. The magic continues next week. Joy Mandy. But which way? I'm all turned around. Devon. It is a responsibility. Danielle. I have to help my friends. And Billy Owens. Just trust me. We're joined by Tosin. On the adventure of a lifetime. Billy Owens and the Secret of the Runes. Take a little time, dream a big dream. Find out who you are and what it means to scheme of things. Take a little time, dream a big dream. And there went the soul. <laughs>